this morning. I do, um, I hopefully I'm not stealing something from what Ruth is planning to do later. Probably. But I do want to take a moment for us to just pray. Um, uh, first for those who um, are feeling unwell today and otherwise would be here. Um, Allison has had a stomach bug uh, that got really bad yesterday. And, uh, and so she and Paul are home uh, making sure not to spread anything to us. So we want to pray for Allison and Dave had been uh, feeling unwell. Um, we're supposed to go out of town um, today. And so we want to pray for them as well. And Lynn is traveling. Um, and, not yes, <laughs> and, and um, Juliet, who is uh, probably about now en route back from, from Birmingham. And uh, so I want to lift everybody up in prayer for safe travels for those who are traveling and for healing for those who need healing. And Karen is feeling a bit under the weather as well. Um, so I want to lift up prayers for them. And I also want to lift up prayers for um, the people of Afghanistan. And uh, I know so many, for so many of us, our, our hearts and minds are just heavy with the news coming from Afghanistan and what's going on on the ground there mm -hmm. as um, U.S. troops um, very much prematurely left that nation um, unprepared for what yeah. has come and, uh, and we want to lift them up. And also for the people of Haiti who are um, still trying to um, figure out um, who needs to be dug out after the earthquakes that they've had. And I know there's so many other things going on around the world um, that we can pray for if um, the, the Lord brings anything to mind or if there's something that you've thought of, um, we can pray for those as well. Um, and so just shout those out, add those in to, um, as this is I'm praying. Father God, we just, um, we pray for um, our church family. Um, we pray for those um, who are part of New Nation Church Shrewsbury who, um, for whatever reason, are um, unable to be here today. For those who are feeling unwell, Lord, we just pray that you would have your healing hand upon each one. And for those who are traveling, we pray your traveling mercies upon them. And um, we just pray that um, where they're at, they would be um, just knowing that your spirit is with them and that they are in your presence, that they are well loved. And, and Lord, for the people of Afghanistan, um, it's it's just heartbreaking to see what's happening. Um, in our church in Concord, we had um, um, a woman there who was from Afghanistan, and she has been through all of this before, and she told us what it was like for her and for the loss of um, freedoms that she experienced um, when the Taliban came in, and um, even though she had education and she had a business and she was doing well, all of that had to end. Um, as a woman, she lost all of her rights. And, um, and thankfully, her family was able to um, immigrate eventually to the US. And I know other Afghani families um, who were also part of our church in the US. And, um, and I just think of what is happening all over again as history repeats itself. And um, oppression, this oppression, oppressive cloud of um, the Taliban and um, radical Islam comes and takes over. And so Lord, I just pray that uh, there would be relief and um, help for all of those who are there who feel trapped. And especially for your people, your church in Afghanistan, Lord. I've heard so many mind-blowing testimonies of how your spirit has been moving again amongst the Afghan people in so many house churches and so many miracles and, um, and radio programs that were allowed to be broadcast that never had been allowed in the past. And people have been coming to faith in you, Lord Jesus, um, in great numbers over the past um, decade or so. And, and so, Lord, I just pray that you would keep your people safe. And um, as we've heard of um, radical um, Taliban members going door to door, seeking out pastors and Christians to, um, to bring them to firing lines, um, Lord God, I just pray your hand of protection would be upon each and every one and that you would shield them under your wings, Lord God. And so we lift them up and also pray for um, just the relief efforts in Haiti after um, the earthquake uh, a couple of weeks ago. Lord, I just pray that um, there would be um, just amazing stories of, of how you have set people free from rubble and uh, from um, dangerous situations, Lord God. And I just pray that 
um, the relief efforts would go well and that um, we would um, hear good news from Haiti. And uh, for troubles going on around the world, Lord God, I just pray that you would um, intervene and that we would um, just be praying in agreement with your spirit about what you um, desire and what your heart is for um, each and every person um, who you bring to our thoughts and our minds and that we read about in the news um, who needs your touch, Lord God. And I just pray these things, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. So, um, so this morning, as you can see, I'm going to be sharing about blessing one another. Um, last week I spoke on blessing the blesser, and of course we know that the blesser is God, um, and I stated how I just felt it was really important as we are still in the early stages of establishing New Nation Church Shrewsbury that we sort of stake out that territory, that we want to be a people who are a blessing to the Lord. And um, it's easy to um, say that you know, we want him to bless us, but we are called to be a people who bless him as well. And as I was preparing last week's sermon, there were a few things that I, I thought, you know, I, I really want to share these things, but they don't quite fit with that particular message. And then during the week, the Holy Spirit just reminded me of some of those things, and, um, and so I, I mentioned a couple things to Ruth, and she's like, oh my gosh, that, that ties in with what, what the Lord was doing with me about that. And then so one thing led to another, led to another, and so what was going to be a one-off sermon last week is turning into a small three-part series. Um, so uh, today I'm again speaking about blessing one another, and next week Ruth will be sharing about um, blessing others. And you might think, hold on, what's the difference between blessing one another and blessing others? And um, I will get into that, I will define that a little bit better um, shortly. Um, and, well, actually, let's, let's go into that now. So blessing one another, I'm talking about blessing um, those in the family of God. Um, and um, there are uh, many, many times in Scripture where it, it becomes very clear that um, Jesus has certain things, that his disciples um, teach certain things uh, in their letters, where they are saying uh, how we are to treat one another. And in those circumstances, one another means um, those who belong to God's church. And, um, and I know for many people, the idea that there, well, there's an us and a them is something that can make us quite uncomfortable. And really, it kind of should, because we don't want there to be an us and a them. We want everybody to come to faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Um, we would love everybody to be part of the one another that includes those who belong to Jesus. Um, but the truth of the matter is... Um, at this point in time, there are, of course, many who don't belong to Jesus. Um, and you know, we can use examples of all sorts of uh, situations where there are different versions of one another. Um, there are those who are running the 10K marathon today um, through the town, and um, those who are running could refer to the other runners and themselves as one another. Um, and those who are watching um, spectating the race could refer to each other as spectators as one another and as God's people we can refer to each other as one another um, and again before I go any further with that though I'm going to do something that may seem like um, a bit of a sidetrack but um, I think it's something that's also very important um, as many of us are still getting to know each other and getting to um, learn um, about one another um, I want to just make sure that we have an opportunity to um, know that um, if you are in this room, um, if you have not had an opportunity at some point in your life to join God's family, to become what I am calling today one another, I want to give you that chance. Um, and if you already have come to faith in Jesus Christ, um, well, this morning you will have an opportunity to learn a way that if you find, ever find yourself in a situation where you're having a conversation with somebody or the Holy Spirit just leads you to um, lead somebody to faith, um, you will be equipped to do that. So hopefully you got one of these on your way in this morning. It says the Roman road. And if you didn't get one, um, raise your hand. I've got a few extras up here if anybody needs one. And... Um, Make sure to take these with you, keep these. Uh, they're bookmarks, um, which can be quite handy. And um, 
I made them myself. Uh, so, uh, so cherish them because they're very special. They're just, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're nothing terribly special, really. But uh, I think the information on there is really helpful. And we'll come back to that screen. So, um, so this is the Romans Road. And um, what it is, it is uh, a collection of scriptures from the letter to the church in Rome that Paul wrote that brings people to an understanding of what it means to come to saving faith in Jesus Christ and um, how we can go about doing that. Now, ultimately, um, faith is a gift that all people receive from Jesus. And um, Romans, um, you know, there's much written about that in the letter of Romans. We're not going to go into that a great deal today. But faith itself is a gift, and everybody is given a measure of faith. Some people are given a tiny, 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 tiny bit of faith, but what does Scripture say about um, a little bit of faith? Faith is a mustard seed. can do what? It can move mountains. Um, so you don't need a lot of faith. Um, and some people are given huge measures of faith. And um, you know, some people have something in the middle. Um, but with whatever faith you have received as a gift from God, and all people have that measure of faith, um, even those who don't believe have faith, but we have to do something with our faith. Um, and the Romans Road explains what we can do. So um, the first scripture from Romans in the Romans Road is Romans 1, 6a. So it's just the first bit of Romans um, 1, excuse me, 1, 16a. And it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. And so basically, it's just sharing uh, in from the letter to the Roman church um, that there is power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's not just any kind of power, but it is very specifically a power to save. Um, and it is also um, there for everyone who believes. And if you have your Bible handy, uh, at some point, you've got the scriptures here on the bookmark, but you might even want to jot these down in your Bible um, and put, you know, uh, Romans Road A, and, and you know, maybe if, if you're really good at highlighting and, and you know, marking your Bible uh, and do it really artfully, I'm sure that there's some really great artful ways that you can, you know, do the Romans Road through um, the letter to the church in Rome. But... Um, but yeah, it's good to mark these things and, and you know, in the first scripture, point to the next, to the next, to the next. Because um, it's a good thing to know. It's a good tool for us. Um, and then the next scripture is Romans 3.23. And it says quite simply, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And uh, so what is that telling us? It means that everybody, every single person falls short of God's holiness. Um, everybody has sinned. And therefore, everybody has a problem of sin. And, um, and then Romans 6.23 explains why sin is such a problem. And uh, Romans 6.23 says, oh, excuse me, this is a slightly different version of Romans. Right? There are variations of it. Uh, so Romans 6.23 says um, in the scriptures, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, the gospel has power, power to save. Um, everybody has sin in their life, and the wages of that sin that is in our lives is death. Um, so, we have a problem of sin, but there's the gospel that has the power to save. And then Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners... Christ died for us. So we've got sin, we've got the gospel, and we've got Jesus Christ. And what does Jesus do? He dies for us. So if the wages, the price, what you earn for the sin in your life is the death penalty, it has to be paid. That's part of the reality of God's justice. And it sounds harsh, but it's the truth. Um, sin earns death. But what happens? Jesus Christ dies in our place. He dies for us. He dies for our sin. 
And then Romans 10, 9 and 10, says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with your heart one believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. And so where does that bring us? Um, that brings us to the point where um, we, if we have sin in our life that we haven't confessed, that we haven't um, given over to Jesus Christ, um, we need to do that. That is part of uh, the process of salvation. Is we need to acknowledge that we have sin, that we have a problem of sin. We have to acknowledge that there is a solution to the sin in our lives, and Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection is our solution. And uh, if we believe and trust that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, if we truly believe that, and we confess our sin with our mouths, and we confess our belief in Jesus Christ as our Savior, well, that's a right action, that's righteousness. And if we believe to righteousness and confess these things, we are saved. And then finally, Romans 10, 13 says, For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so, um, I don't know if anybody here has not in your life had an opportunity to, um, to come to faith, um, to officially say, Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I need salvation. I have a problem of sin in my life, and you are my solution. You are the solution, the one and only solution. And I want to confess my brokenness, my sin, my wrongdoing, and I want you to take that away, Lord Jesus. And I acknowledge and believe and trust, Jesus, that you have paid the price for the sin in my life. And because of that, I trust that you have also risen in victory over my sin and my death penalty, and you invite me to new life forever. And if that's something that you want to make your own prayer, you can do so today. And if you're listening on Facebook, you can do that wherever you're at. And if it's something that you've maybe heard for the first time and need to think about, think about it. Take time and think about it. And talk to me afterwards, and let's pray together, and let's work that out. Because I want each and every person to have the opportunity to be part of the one another that I'm going to be speaking about in a bit more detail. Because we are called to be a people who bless one another. Amen? So, one of the things um, that I also wanted to share about, and I've been wanting to share about this for a few weeks... This is something that I shared early on, on Zoom, um, and this is something that the Lord was impressing upon um, Ruth and I and some of the, um, some of the other trustees uh, for our church about, um, it's not a, the vision of the church by any means, it's more of a perspective and an approach um, that we want to be aware of as we uh, continue to establish and grow New Nation Church Shrewsbury. And um, it is quite simply this. Let's see if this works. Ah, there we go. Yes. Got a little red pointy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it is God, church, world. And so God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, God needs to be our first priority. Um, some months ago, um, when we were meeting in uh, Ruth and my back garden, um, I shared about prioritizing our first love. And... Um, if you know scripture, you know that Jesus Christ is our first love, um, that God is our first love. He loved us before the world was even founded, before he created the world. He loved us. He knew us before the foundation of the world. And, um, and so he is our first love, and he should be our priority as such. And, um, and next is the church. And uh, the church, God's people, in all places, throughout all time, um, gathering together in local places to worship, for prayer, um, the church should be our next priority as the church. 
And then after that, our third priority should be the world. Those who are not yet, and hopefully yet is a very key word, not yet part of the church. Because we do pray and hope that everybody would come to faith in Jesus Christ. Um, and so last week, when I spoke about blessing the blesser, that was starting off with making sure that we bless God. And so this week, we're going to be speaking about blessing the church. And then next week, Ruth, as I said, we'll be sharing about blessing the world or those who are not yet part of God's church. Um, and and when I say blessing the church, um, church is, is really it's kind of a collective and individual term at the same time. You know, Shirley, you're the church. Did you know that? Bruce, you're the church. <laughs> Kayla, you're the church. Rose, you're the church. Um, and we are collectively the church. We are individually parts of the body of Jesus Christ, um, and we are collectively the body of Christ. Um, whether meeting in small local churches like ours, um, and, or in mega churches, um, the church all over the world, uh, all those who belong to Jesus Christ, who have come to saving faith in him and put their trust in him, are the church. And uh, so we want to um, kind of look at this God church world as a priority um, and, um, and as an approach and keep these three in mind with um, how we do our lives in Christ. So, that being said, when Jesus Christ was walking the world, he was preparing his disciples for what was going to be coming. He was teaching them the Father's heart. He was teaching and preparing them for uh, becoming the body of Christ, for becoming his hands, his feet, his spokespeople um, to share the good news, to point to Jesus Christ as the only way through which one can be saved, um, and to begin to reconcile um, God and man. Jesus did that initial work. Um, Jesus and his death on the cross um, is when we read about the veil in the Holy of Holies being torn from the top down um, and that separation was broken between God and man. But there's still reconciliation that needs to take place. And in the process of teaching his disciples that, uh, he <coughs> said these words from the Gospel of John. We find the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. And it says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And he repeats this again um, later on in the Gospel of John two times in um, in. John 15, 12, and 15, 17. So this is something he was really, really, really trying to impress upon them. Um, how important it is for those who belong to Jesus Christ, for those who are his followers, his disciples, to love one another. And, um, you know, and how often do we need to be reminded of that? You know, it's not difficult to look at the state of Christianity, and know that um, there are uh, many situations where um, those who are counted amongst his church where we aren't loving one another. Um, and uh, maybe we're trying, and maybe we're not doing so well. Um, and maybe some aren't trying at all. Um, but the mark of being a disciple of Jesus Christ is that we love one another. And you've probably heard it said, um, they will know you by your love. Um, that comes from this verse right here. And the Apostle Paul put it this way. And all of the apostles restate this in their letters. Um, and so clearly Jesus did impress upon them and they did take to heart what Jesus spoke. Um, and Paul put it this way, again, in his letter to the Roman church. He says, Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, 
giving preference to one another. And so, how do we demonstrate our kindly, affectionate, brotherly love for one another? So, the other thing that God had impressed upon me that I wanted to share was something called the five love languages. Um, raise your hand if you've heard of the five love languages. It's, it's, it's generally become a, a pretty um, well um, thought of book. Um, it's by a gentleman named Gary Chapman. And in Mr. Chapman's book, he identifies five love languages. And, um, and Ruth and I are convinced that there's a six. Um, <laughs> so um, the five that um, Gary lists are first acts of service. Actually, these aren't in any particular order. Um, acts of service. Um, I'll say it in the order you've gotten there. Um, words of affirmation. Gifts of giving, quality time, acts of service, physical touch, and then the sixth one that Ruth and I, um, we swear is, is a love language, is sharing good food, right? <laughs> sharing a meal, you know, and not just any meal, but a good meal with others. Um, and um, so when we were having barbecues, you know, at, um, at the, the church gatherings in our back garden, you know, we, we were really happy to be able to feed people, although it was, you know, mostly burgers and sausages, you know, not the best food in the world, but, you know, um, but we love the idea of, of being able to break bread and share food with everybody. Um, so, with these love languages, um, I believe that there is evidence in Scripture that these are ways that um, people, all people, receive and express love. Now, we don't all do all of these because not all of these actually resonate with all of us, right? Um, so, for me, for example, uh, gift giving. Um, gift giving. Um, <laughs> so, one of my go-tos in expressing love is gift giving. And it's really unfortunate because I don't actually enjoy gift giving. Um, I, I don't hate it. But I do gift giving because I was raised in a family where that was sort of the accepted um, expression of love and, and kind of expected. And so that became my default um, because I was taught that that was how you do this. And, and yet it always felt a bit empty to me. Um, both giving and even more so receiving. Um, so gift giving for me is is probably the lowest of all of my love languages. Doesn't mean that I don't do it. Like I said, I, I was kind of trained to do it, um, but it, it's a bit hollow to me personally. But for some people, gift giving it's it's like it rings all the bells. You know, um, whether they it's giving, whether it's receiving, whether it's giving and receiving, and and each of us we have different. Um, versions of the love languages that we um, enjoy practicing that really, um, you know, that we know that we're really loving on somebody if we do certain of these things. And they may not always be the same ones that we enjoy receiving from others. So for example, you may love giving gifts, but you may not like receiving them. You might prefer um, somebody spend quality time with you. And that might really fill your love tank um, if somebody spends quality time. Um, or you may be somebody who loves to do things for other people. Um, and maybe you also love it when people do things for you. Or maybe you prefer um, if people speak words of affirmation. Um, and like I know that, you know, with dogs, for example, you know, how many dogs don't love words of affirmation? You know, you can actually say anything you want. It's the tone of the voice, right? Um, but, you know, dogs love to be, you know, um, doted upon um, with our words and with physical touch. Um, but we each have our own versions and mixtures of our love languages, both for giving as well as receiving. And then we also have learned behaviors as well. Um, so with these, um, when Jesus was teaching his disciples, 
One of the things that he shared was this from the Gospel of John again. Um, in John 13, verses 13 through 17, he said, uh, and this was right after he had washed the disciples' feet um, when they were preparing for the Last Supper in the upper room. And he said, You call me teacher and Lord. You say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. And we're not going to wash feet today, so. Uh, but we might one of these Ruth always says, No, no. She, she cringes if I ever mention it. But I, I actually really like washing Do feet. Do I? <laughs> I think you cringe on behalf of uh, other people, especially your parents, as much as anyone. But, um, but uh, and then he continues. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. And so now, some there are some Christian denominations that include foot washing as one of their must-dos. So, I mean, you, if communion is a must-do, however often you do it, it uh, doesn't matter, but you must do it, uh, and we do believe that. Um, and, um, and baptism is another, uh, that yes, you must be baptized. Anybody here not baptized? Um, but, uh, no, everybody's just baptized, praise the Lord. Uh, but baptism is another that we believe very much that yes, baptism is one of those things that we must do. Um, and it's not a requirement of salvation, um, but it is a requirement of us saying, yes, Lord Jesus, you said that we should do this, and so we're going to do this. Um, but we do know that there's a good chance that the thief on the cross who Jesus promised would be with him in paradise that day may not have been baptized. Um, may have been, may not have been, we don't really know. Um, but he didn't have the chance at that point that he confessed faith to get down from the cross and get baptized. So, um, you know, I think he would have if he could have. Um, but we do believe that if it is in our ability to get baptized, if we profess faith in Jesus Christ, that we are to do it. Um, and then I think it's Church of God and maybe Church of God in Christ. Um, and they actually believe that foot washing is also one of those must-dos. Um, but for us, we believe that foot washing, that what Jesus was teaching here was the idea of serving one another of considering ourselves um, not better than other people, being willing to get down on our knees and roll up our sleeves and do sometimes quite disgusting and filthy work. Um, I've washed some nasty feet in my day, uh, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but to be quite honest, you know, I, I was really blessed by it. Um, and the idea of foot washing, the principle that Jesus is teaching here, is acts of service. Acts of service, of serving other people. And in order to be a servant, you have to be willing to humble yourself and consider yourself no better than anybody else. And, um, and so that's what it takes to do an act of service. You have to be willing to say, you know what, my time, um, you know, whatever clothes I'm wearing, if, if I don't want to get them dirty, um, my energy, my efforts, um, you know what? It's not about me. It's about how I can put those to the benefit, to the blessing of another person. It's that desire to love and bless others through serving them. And this is what Jesus is talking about here. We also find words of affirmation in Scripture. And these are just a few places. Um, and I would say that when it comes to um, blessing one another, to expressing our love for one another, that when it comes to words of affirmation, um, it's especially about words that affirm our position, our standing, our lives in Jesus Christ, that affirm our faith in him, our identity in Christ. And so we've got a few short verses here as examples. Ephesians 5.19 says... Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Um, and so you see blessing the Lord at the end of that, but also um, blessing one another with words of affirmation, with spiritual words, with spiritual songs, um, with things that build up our faith. And the second 
is from 1 Thessalonians 5.11, and it says, Therefore comfort each other and edify one another, just as you are also doing. Um, so we, uh, Paul acknowledges that the Thessalonian church is doing this, um, and, he, and he points out that this is a good and important thing, that it, as we interact with one another, that we should comfort each other. Um, and how do we comfort each other? Um, one of the best ways to comfort people is with affirming, comforting words. Um, not the only way. Um, and edify one another. And edifying, that is something that we do with the words that we speak. Um, edifying simply means building each other up, strengthening each other. Um, again, that word edify is linked to the word edifice, which is just another word for a building. Um, so edify, build up one another. And then third, we have Hebrews 3.13, which says, but exhort one another daily. And again, this is something we do with our words. Um, While it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So in order to counteract sin in our lives, what are we called to do? We're called to exhort one another daily. Um, and I would say I'm probably exhorting us right now. Exhorting is to encourage others into action. Um, and so um, we are called to, with our words, to encourage others into action. Um, and those actions should build us up. They should comfort us. Um, they should strengthen us in our faith. The next one I'm going to share about is quality time. Um, this is one of my uh, ways of expressing love. This is one of my love languages, um, especially to express. Um, and it, this is from Ephesians 4, 1 through 3, and it says, there, I therefore, a pris- the, excuse me, let me try that again. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And now you may hear that scripture, you may think, well, what does that have to do with quality time? Well, if we are long suffering, um, if we are being very, very long and patient with one another, a long amount of time is involved in that. So there's time spent and a long time. And what is the purpose of that time? Uh, We are in that time bearing with one another in love and working on keeping unity and peace with one another. And the only way that we do that is by spending quality time with one another. Um, And that's how we get to know each other, Um, We learn about each other, we learn our strengths, and we also learn our weaknesses, our faults. Um, And patiently working those um, high points and those low points in our relationships with one another out, bearing with one another until we reach that point of unity. Um, And elsewhere in Scripture, I didn't include this, but um, the Scripture talks about um, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Um, And again... Uh, it's hard to forgive somebody if they, you know, if I were to walk by a stranger on the road and just smack him across the face and then they never saw me again, you know, it would be hard for them to forgive me, right? Um, because they would be so shocked, you know, that they wouldn't be able to process that. Um, but if I were to, you know, do that to any of you, which I won't, um, you, know, <laughs> um, you know, or if any of you were to do that to me, you know, um, hopefully you would come and find me and say, well, what the heck was that about? What What is wrong with you that you would do such a thing? You know, we need to work this out. <laughs> and, you know, we, we work it out. We bear with one another. We spend quality time um, digging deep with each other to exhort and encourage and build each other up and um, forgive as we get to know each other and encourage each other to become more and more like Jesus Christ. And we do that with long suffering with patience with time Um, next is gifts and um, here we have in Acts 2 44 and 45 it says now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods 
and divided them among all, as anyone had need. And, um, and so what are they doing? They're giving to one another. Those who had extra were giving to those who didn't have enough. Um, and there was giving and, um, and receiving that was going on. And there are many times throughout Scripture where we see of God's people desiring to uh, raise uh, funds to give gifts to other of God's churches that were struggling, um, that didn't have enough, that were undergoing persecution. And, um, and so, and, and that's something that, that we do here as well. Um, we have a ministry of New Nation Church International called Refugee Redeemers. Um, and uh, many of our brothers and sisters are still refugees in refugee camps in Uganda. Um, I saw a really great post as I was getting this thing ready. Um, where um, one of our churches that had been shut down for many years because everybody had fled to the refugee camps um, was welcoming people this morning. And, and so there was a picture outside the church. And it was our, it's actually our, our original church in South Sudan, in, um, in Wudu. And, um, and so they were reopening. And, but we have helped uh, various individuals who um, have run into trouble um, and needed help or assistance with medical care, with um, funding for education, um, who had lost loved ones and just needed a, um, just just a, a bit of help, um, and so we've given gifts um, to help those in need and to express our love and concern and care for people who um, we love, who are part of one another. And continuing on in Acts, um, straight on from verses forty-four and forty-five, or verses forty-six and forty-seven. And it says, so, continue, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread. See, I told you food. <laughs> and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And this is one of the reasons why blessing one another is so important. Because it shows how we love one another. It's the demonstration of our love for one another. It is how Jesus says they will know us. They will know us. They will know that we belong to Jesus Christ, that we are his disciples because we love one another. And um, the last one, which you may not have expected, but it is in Scripture. Actually, it's quite a few times more than this in Scripture. is physical touch. Um, and it says in Romans 16, 16, Greet one another. With a holy kiss, the churches of Christ greet you. And, you know, you may hear that and, and you may think, ooh, kissing people in church, that's really weird. Um, you know, and, and for many of our cultures, it is really weird. Um, you know, for me as an American, um, yeah, that's kind of weird. But for my heritage, my family's heritage is Italian. And it's not weird for us at all. Um, and so I've got this kind of both and thing where, you know, Americans, you know, by and large, are, are not the most touchy-feely people. I mean, there are some who are very, very touchy-feely. But Italians, we are very touchy-feely. And um, it's, it's how do you come up here? I'm going to demonstrate the holy kiss. Um, as, as in my Italian heritage, we express oh, the holy mean, kiss. You mean how the whole family ambushed me and I had no warning about it? Yeah, so, so, yeah. Um, so our version of a holy kiss is, is holy. It, it's actually, um, there are three kisses. It's uh, <laughs> Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So it's kiss, kiss, kiss. And that's the Italian version of the Holy Kiss. Uh, so, you know, you, the hands on the shoulder. And, and, sometimes, and sometimes, you know, you, you're, it's more your cheeks touching. You know, sometimes. You know, For the European end, Almost, yeah. <laughs> um, and sometimes it's an air kiss. Um, you know, but. There's nothing weird or creepy about it. You know, if you're not used to it, it you know, it does certainly catch you off guard. Um, you know, but it is physical touch. And, you know, this morning, I, I'm a hugger. Um, I didn't used to be. Um, Jesus worked that out of me. Uh, but I am a hugger, and I got to hug many of you this morning. And, um, and for me, that physical touch is one of my ways of expressing and receiving love. And, you know, it's, it's of course, there's, you know, other versions of that, but in a church context with one another, um, being able to give somebody a warm embrace, shake a hand, hand on a shoulder, um, a holy kiss, um, you know, holy in the church context with one another um, 
It is a love language. It is one of the ways that we express our affection for one another in a holy manner. Um, now, there's unholy affection, and we're not going to do that in this church, amen? amen. Um, you know, so, um, but some people, that would be absolutely repulsive to any form of that, even a handshake, you know? Um, and, you know, I, I remember um, over the course of, of quite a while um, with our churches in Uganda, when I would go over and minister there, um, various diseases had swept their nation. And so they had been told that, you know, that they weren't to shake hands, um, but they could, um, at first they could fist, uh, el elbow bump. I think that's where the elbow bump actually began, was in Uganda. Um, and to, to keep diseases from spreading. And so they elbow bumped. I think it was, I can't remember if it was typhoid or hepatitis at that time, but it was something quite contagious and deadly. Um, and, and then, you know, things got a bit better, so they said, oh, you could fist bump. And, um, uh, and then it got worse again, so they said, well, don't fist bump, but air fist bump. And, and they would say, they would go towards each other, just go bongole, um, and I don't know what that means, but it was a greeting um, that they came up with during this time to make up for the fact that physical touch was actually quite um, problematic for spreading of disease. And here we are, um, you know, with COVID having been a worldwide problem, and, um, and people having to limit physical touch. And for those of us who are part of one another, who are part of God's church, many people have been isolated for so long um, that some people came to realize how important physical touch was to them. And many people came to realize just how much they enjoyed not having to physically touch anybody. <laughs> and they're, they're like, I have an excuse. There's a worldwide pandemic. Don't touch me. <laughs> uh, you know, so... Um, that, and that's really a good example for us. Um, so what's the difference between loving one another and blessing one another? Um, and that's where I want to land us today, is with, is with an understanding of the difference between the two. So now loving one another, um, there's the heart and the mind and the desire to express how much we care for one another, how important one another are to each other. But then, another difference with that is the fact that um, if you want to actually bless another person, um, you have to understand what is a blessing to that person. Because blessing means that you are benefiting another person. Is it beneficial? So, so this is an example. Sorry, Lynn, if you're listening. I'm going to use you as an example. Um, so... Um, <laughs> Nothing bad. It's, 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 I think it's quite, quite good. Um, so, um, a few Sundays ago, actually more than a few now, um, we were in, meeting in our garden, and um, Ruth was going. Uh, Ruth, excuse me. Lynn was going through a hard time, and um, and she was a bit raw, and um, and and I whispered to Ruth. I said, Ruth, could you go give Lynn a hug? And um, and because I could just tell she she just needed a hug, and. And, and Ruth was like, oh gosh, Lynn is not a physical touch person. <laughs> you know, is this actually going to be something that Lynn will appreciate or not? And, um, but, um, but eventually Ruth did. And, um, and it is exactly what Lynn needed at that time. And uh, so even though um, Lynn generally is not a physical touch person, um, so just so you know, so if you want to bless Lynn, Usually, physical touch is not the way. Um, so, um, but in that moment, it was something that the Holy Spirit had impressed upon me, and then eventually Ruth, um, that yes, um, this will bless them. Um, and so, when we come to blessing one another, um, how do we actually know that we are blessing somebody? Number one, listen to the voice of God. Um, he will lead you to bless people in the ways that um, you want to bless, uh, it, that will actually be a benefit to them. And number two, get to know one another. As we are one another, as we are brothers and sisters in the Lord, um, we need to learn about each other. We need to develop and grow in our relationship with one another so that we actually understand how we can express our love for one another in a way that is actually a blessing in a way that will benefit the others that we want to express our brotherly, sisterly love for. 
So it takes time, it takes effort, but this is also one of the ways that we come to a point of unity in the body of Christ, that we grow together, that we're able to um, have permission um, and, and right to speak into each other's lives, to edify one another, to exhort and encourage one another, um, and uh, to also help each other um, overcome those things where if we're stuck, uh, if, if there's sin in our lives, um, if, uh, you know, if there's, there's an issue that somebody can actually help with, um, it takes being vulnerable, which can be quite challenging, but um, it also is worth it. Because you know, every one of you has been blessed by another person at some point in time. And when you've been truly blessed in a way that just touches you, that kind of that fills your love tank, um, you know how good that is. You know what it is to receive a blessing. And just as much as you know how good it is to receive a blessing, because you belong to Jesus Christ, you should have that desire from Christ, from the Holy Spirit living inside of you, to really bless other people so that they can receive just as you have in the past. And as you do that, you'll find that you yourself are also able to receive better because they will be getting to know you just as you're getting to know them. And um, so with that, um, come to the scripture as a wrap up in just a moment. Um, but um, I um, wanted to just share that um, Ruth and I have been speaking about this for a couple weeks now. Um, that in the, the months ahead, because it'll take a little while, um, and also we've got to clean our house because you know, it's, it's a very dog hairy pit right now. We've got to keep, keep on keeping the dog hair down to a minimum. Um, we do want to, little by little, have um, each of you over um, for a meal at our house um, because that is one of the ways that we express love. And the great thing about breaking bread with one another is that there's also quality time spent. Um, it's a way that both of us enjoy expressing our love. And I know for me, quality time um, is a way that I also enjoy sometimes receiving. And so um, hopefully we'll be able to, to get everybody's schedules little by little and um, start to plan these out and, um, and have you over for a meal. And, uh, and be sure when the time comes to tell us what you do and don't like, because we want to bless you. Um, you know, and and if, if anybody is you know, saying, oh, that's a really good idea, I want to do that as well. Just so you know, uh, I'm allergic to chocolate and oranges. <laughs> <laughs> and food is a love language that I love to not only give, but to receive. So, so if at some point you want to invite me over, you know, or want to take me out for a meal, you know, I, I'm open to it. Um, so... Um, on that note, I'm going to wrap this up here. Ruth is going to come and she's going to actually share a blessing um, before we continue much further. And our last scripture is from 1 Peter um, verses, chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. It says, Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tender-hearted. Be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling. But on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. And uh, that's it for me. And... Thank you, Todd. Um, so um, when I knew that Todd was um, speaking about blessing each other, um, one of the, um, I guess, disciplines that Todd and I learned while we were in America, so while we were in America, he's been there forever until the last four years, um, whereas I was there for about a decade. And we got to know a, a really good friend who used this practice in her ministry regularly. Um, and she's actually the lady that introduced us, so she's got a lot to answer for. But, <laughs> but she um, taught us about blessing our spirit. Um, and it's quite an unusual thing when you first start doing it, but um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to read um, some words, and it's it's taken from scripture, but somebody put these together. Good job. Just make, make them join over. Um, someone's put these together, and they've taken words from scripture, and it's basically um, speaking God's heart over us. 
So um, the best thing to do when you're hearing one of these is to not try and understand every word that's coming out because they're quite long. Not massive, it's not like 20 minutes or anything, it's just a few minutes. But there's too much information that you're going to hear to try and process it all. So this isn't really like a sermon where you're like, right, I'm going to try and take it all in, I'm going to try and process it. This is something just to let the words wash over you. So it's probably a good idea to maybe just close your eyes, whatever it is that you need to do to not be distracted, and just allow the Holy Spirit to use these words and then to wash over your spirit. So this is called the sound of heaven. Listen with your spirit to God's word. The Lord came and stood there, calling us, sorry, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. I bless you with awakening your spirit to the voice of God and tuning your spiritual ears to him. Your creator God spoke and out of the void all things had their being and order. In tuning your ears to hear, I bless you with becoming like the child Samuel in your response to God's calling. I bless you with being fully engaged with listening as a process, a training which you practice and a deliberate choice you make. Spirit, definitely and definitively be in control and in dominion over your soul, mind and body. Cleanse, awaken and alert your personal sound portal or your ears so that what you hear will not be dull or defiled. I bless you with awakened, deeply cleansed, alert and finely tuned ears to hear so that the sound of heaven will open the spirit realm to you in God's time. I bless you with quieting your soul in order to hear more clearly with your spiritual ears. Your listening is very active, not passive. God speaks to you in many creative ways and I bless you with setting your spiritual ears to his frequency to hear his voice profoundly in all of its manifestations. I bless you with hearing the Father of the Spirit in his word by faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When he speaks through dreams and visions, through others, by his Holy Spirit and through his creation. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord and I bless you with hearing their declaration. Your salvation depended on his voice calling you and your response to him was music to his ears. I bless you with the posture and willingness of spirit that makes you able and ready to hear every word from God. I bless you with listening on the inside with commitment to obey. I bless you with sensitive ears and focused spiritual attention on listening to God, that when he speaks, your receiver is tuned to his frequency. I bless you with a hearing spirit and an understanding heart to discern between good and evil. I bless you with clearing out the static and interference so that you have a clear channel. Enlightened spiritual hearing is vital to your spirit life, salvation, service, spiritual warfare, and your worship. From the very beginning, Israel was called to listen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. This word, shamer, or hear, means to listen and obey. God has called every generation to hear him and act on what he says, from the children of Israel gathered to receive the Ten Commandments, to the voice of the prophets crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, to the words of our Lord Jesus in Revelation, who has ears, let him hear. God will honour your spirit's willingness to hear with a view to obey no matter what. Hear the prophet's voice crying to make way for a new visitation of God among his people and respond positively by the Holy Spirit. I bless you with a warrior's keen hearing in your spirit. In times of spiritual battle, it is crucial to treat you your ears to hear your commander. I bless you with hearing the sound of the trumpet that calls you to readiness for battle. The sound just over the treetops that signals the timing for battle 
and the shouts of victory in the camp. I bless you with a worshipping spirit. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God, the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Worthy is the Lamb to receive all praise and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and strength. I bless you with worship that is an echo of the proclamation of all of heaven. I bless you with a singing in your spirit and resonating in your spirit in the same key as the sound of heaven, keeping time with the beat of heavenly rhythm. There are new songs to hear and sing to the Lord. Songs of deliverance, songs of victory, sweet love songs from your bridegroom, songs of comfort, songs of joy, songs of praise, songs you sing, songs you join in singing, and songs the Lord sings over you. I bless you with open heavens to hear and respond to the sound of heaven. I bless you with knowing the voice of your shepherd. Jesus said that his sheep know his voice and follow him. I bless you with active and accurate listening for deliverance, for freedom, for victory, for direction and for comfort. I bless you with hearing in your spirit all that is vital to possessing your birthright and understanding your legitimacy, for affirmation or for time, for timing and for seasons. I bless you with a holy, clean, sound portal that is vital to your life as a child of your Father, for it leads you into deeper and sweeter intimacy with him and more responsiveness to him. I bless you with the satisfaction of your longing to hear him say, This is my child, in whom I am well pleased. And well done, good and faithful servant, enter my rest. I bless you in the name of the Father of your Spirit. Amen.